Let's pray. Lord God, help us to see how you are at work in the world alongside us and sometimes despite of us. Help us to join you in healing, lifting up, and caring for your people and all of creation. Amen. In this week's gospel, the people who are hearing Jesus are questioning where Jesus is getting his authority and power from. Still doing his ministry, Jesus goes back to his hometown. And instead of people being astounded at the miracles he's doing and the gospel that he's teaching, people doubt and question. They say, isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary? Instead of hearing who Jesus is and what he is preaching, they focus on him as they know him. He is not Jesus the prophet, Jesus the teacher, Jesus connected to God. He's just some guy, the carpenter, nothing else. In fact, we're told in verse 3, that they have such an amount of disbelief, they actually take offense to what Jesus is doing and saying. To us, it's a weird reaction. Why would they not listen? Why would they not care about what Jesus is doing in the world? I think part of what Jesus is talking about, about prophets not being able to go home, has to do with human nature. It has to do with how humans think of ourselves and how we think about others. When we think of ourselves, we have limitless potential. We are complicated and deep. I know I can hold conflicting thoughts about myself in tension with one another. I'm a very compassionate person, but I can also get angry and not want to have anything to do with people. I can know this about myself and not be confused or conflicted about it because I know the reasons that I have for doing so. And I'm both familiar and comfortable with who I am and how I think of myself. But when we think about other people, we tend to generalize who they are. And part of this is necessary. We know ourselves because we spend a lot of time in our own heads. But with other people, we only get snapshots of who they are. When we find something new about someone, we might add that tidbit of knowledge to our own memories, or we might decide that we already know enough about them and disregard it. Or we might forget it because we're human and our memories are fallible. (laughs) So the people in Jesus' hometown think the most adequate way of knowing him is as a carpenter, son of another carpenter. This is all Jesus is to them and all he will ever be to them. It's their loss that they don't try to understand Jesus better and listen to him. But while it's easy for us to condemn because we ask ourselves, who wouldn't want to know Jesus better? But we do the same thing. When we're on autopilot in our day-to-day lives, we do the exact same thing to other people around us. When I first meet people, unless it's in a church or church-related environment, I actually don't share that I'm a pastor as the first thing we talk about. And it's not that I'm ashamed or in any way uncomfortable with who I am or my call, but for an increasing number of people, especially those around my age, being a pastor or even being associated with the Christian church causes people to make assumptions about who I am and what I do. So just because I'm curious about this type of thing, I ask people about what's on their mind when they find out that I'm a pastor? Because I'm weird and I like knowing these things. So I ask, I said, when, when you find out that I'm a pastor, 
what are some of the assumptions you make about who I am? So listen to some of the responses that I've had. You are uptight. <laughs> you are judgmental. You are inauthentic because you just have to perform. You only work on Sunday. <laughs> you are boring. <laughs> I think being called boring hurts the most out of that list. <laughs> but, but people hear certain aspects about who we are and automatically categorize the rest of how they see us based on that. They don't have to be remotely true for this to happen, but it's a trick our memory plays on us to make people easier to remember. But if we remember people based off of things that we say about them instead of what they share to us, we're doing the same thing as the people in Jesus' hometown. Each of us have part of our lives that we consider the most important. And we may not frame them internally like this, but we all have core values and ways that we see ourselves that are extremely important to us. So this is going to be a sermon where you have to participate, sorry. <laughs> I know it's early. But don't worry, you don't have to shout things aloud unless you want to, you are welcome to. Pick three words that you would choose to describe the core of yourself. So pretend you're in an elevator, someone's really interested in getting to know you, but you only have a couple of seconds. What are three words you would use to describe yourself? I have an unfair advantage because, well, I prepared the sermon and I take about eight hours roughly to do that a week. So I got time to think about mine. So this is a primer. For myself, Mine are compassion, wisdom, and teaching. I am a compassionate person as a general rule. I try to value other people, their situations, their feelings, their contexts. And even if I don't know them, I still want the best for them because I believe that's what humanity is called to do. And I'm always searching for wisdom in the sense of how I apply any knowledge I gain to try to make the world better. Again, I feel called to do that. And teaching, because both of those things don't matter if I keep them to myself. I want to impact, I want to impart what I know to other people for their benefit and for others. And if I succeed at doing this, even in a small scale, I feel like I have done what I am called to do in that moment for that person. So think about what your three words would be. When you have them, raise your hand. And you could put it down if you. I thought about teasing you and seeing how long you could hold your hand up. But. <laughs> if you're more comfortable sharing in private, please come talk to me. I'm curious what your three words are and why. You know you have your three solid words for yourself when you can both explain why and you feel like each one is important to who you are. But what if you asked someone else for your three words? Who would get close enough to what you have picked for yourself in your life? I think the people that are the closest to us have the best chance at getting them, but also maybe they'd share something with you about yourself that helps you understand who you are a little bit more or what they appreciate about you. Again, it, it takes time to know someone well and spending a lot of time with them to get to that point. In our gospel reading, Jesus offers an invitation to all who meet him. Some get to know him and follow his way of being in the world. 
And when this happens, miraculous things occur. Unexpected things occur. Others, like those in his hometown, reject the invitation to know him. But the gospel reading is not just about the people in Jesus' hometown rejecting who he is. The disciples are sent out to continue Jesus' ministry. That's in verse 7. It's not their own work that they're doing, but a continuation of Jesus' work, and therefore God's work, in the world. And we, too, are extensions of this ministry, even though it looks different. But what's shocking here is how little the disciples have when they go out to do their ministry. They're not taking scrolls or items to show that they have wealth and power to get people to listen to them. They simply have themselves. Sometimes it may not look like we have much. We're not the biggest, the strongest, the richest, or any other ist that we might want to name. But we are loved. And where God's love is, ministry happens. Lives are changed, people are healed, and people feel like they belong with one another. And in each of these things, God works far beyond anything that we ever imagine. So you have your three words for yourself. Share these pieces with yourself, with others. And remember what they share with you. Because when we learn to truly share and listen, community is built. And that community that is built gives us a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. Amen.